Arrow, Arrow are you there? I am here. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's like I've like, got Arrow, Aaron. Go ahead. <laughs> you have 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Aaron, I get accused of that all the time. In fact, that's one of the reasons why radio didn't want me to use the name Arrow because of the of Arbitron, and they felt that it, listeners we would be writing down Aaron instead of Arrow. Oh wow! Oh man! Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I usually get when I say Aaron for whatever reason. For some reason, people think that I'm saying Aaron. Yeah. So um, clearly, I'm not enunciating uh, well, but. Uh, but hey, what can you do? <laughs> hey, congratulations on NBC's Grand Crew. I mean, this show is so up to date and so, my God, it's it's almost like you're saying, guys, you can be friends again, get together, share some wine, and have some stories. Yes, that's, man, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly, exactly what we're giving permission to do, and that's exactly what we want you to do and hope you'll do. And um, yeah, and you know, look, I mean, I feel like growing up, you know, like I, I, we used to sit around the TV, you know, either as family or as friends, wait for a show to come on. I, obviously, I didn't have wine at that time as a kid, but my parents might. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, we would just congregate and watch a show, then talk about it. And, it. and it made everything very communal and very fun. And so we hope to just follow the, in those footsteps of, of those of those great sitcoms and comedies. Uh, and, and I'm so glad that, that you feel that way. I, I love the mantra, which is everything's more fun when you're in a crew. And and I sat there when I heard that, I'm going, that's exactly, that that is that is the thing that we need to be sharing. Yes, 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 yes. Everything's more fun when you're in a crew. And then when you're in a crew, everything's more fun with a glass of wine. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, it's it's perfect. But But no, I mean, look, I think coming out of the pandemic, or, or I guess we're coming out of the pandemic, I think we could say that now, um, we all needed a reason to to laugh, for one, you know, and then also we just wanted, and because we had been so isolated, we, we wanted to, 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 to be with our friends again and, and to connect. Um, and so I think this show does a wonderful job of, of providing an opportunity and space for that to happen. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm most proud of and I know that the rest of um, my colleagues are as well. So I'm so glad that you started off that way. That's wonderful. And and um, yes, more of that, more of that, please. What's interesting about Phil and Dan in putting this show together, so many times I've always been told you can only have three on the screen. You guys are working five and six on that screen and I'm not losing you know interest or, or, or being driven away. I mean, I love the way that that whole entire collaboration between all the actors has its own energy and personality. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I think that's, you know, I think it's twofold. I think obviously, like you said, Phil and Dan did a wonderful job of not only, you know, writing the story, constructing the story, but then casting the, uh, casting it very well. And, and, and we got lucky in the sense that like, we, we have great chemistry on and off the screen. We're like really, truly great friends on and off. We hang out, we take trips together. We go to our own bar, wine bar here in LA and and actually, you know, have fun and, and, and unpack our lives. And so um, I think that translates um, on screen and I think it's only gotten stronger um, as, as, as uh, we've gotten, you know, more time together, so. Yeah, the wine bars, to me, that's one of the actors as well, because I love looking at the background because it, it's always changing that background when it comes to sharing that wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a really good job. Uh, the set deck did a really good job of recreating um, a bar um, here in Highland Park, which is where we first filmed our pilot episode. And so they recreated that. And I think then they they added a little something in the second season. If you if you notice, there's like a glowing bear yeah. in the back of um, well. When we're sitting on the couches, you'll see a glowing bear. That wasn't the first season, but they wanted to open up the the bar a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, it's 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 really it's really awesome. And, and we definitely think the bar is obviously another character, our, our seventh character, so to speak. And um, you know, we feature in the bar. We feature all all black wine companies. Yes. Yeah, you'll see little Easter eggs of like. I think the jukebox that was in Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nine Nine, is in is is in our <laughs> bar, uh, which obviously is an ode to Dan Gore and Phil Augusta Jackson, who wrote on that show, and Dan being the creator. You'll see uh, some some album covers of Phil's that you know that he's pl- placed in the backdrop. Uh, so it's a really really cool bar, and um, I remember when we first walked into it, we were like, man, this looks just like the bar that we shot <laughs> we shot our pilot in. 
and now we can't go back to that bar because it's like being at work every time you're there. It's like it's like a weird. It just it just it just it freaks us out. So uh, we found another space that we go to that we frequent. But uh, but yeah, kudos to to the set deck and and, and the art department because they they just killed it. You were talking about the the older episodes. I'm still in love with the episode where you're caught crying. And I mean because I mean <laughs> I mean it, it was so funny. But at the same time, we've all been there. Yes. Look, I, I'm a sucker. I, I cry at the drop of a dime. Like I'll, 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 I'll cry at anything, seriously. And if I if I can't cry, like in my own personal life, I'll be like, but I need to. I need that outlet. I'll definitely be quick to put on uh, Paddington too, like they did <laughs> in that particular episode. Uh, which, by the way, I have to say, is a fantastic, a fantastic movie. And um, Phil, I think, wrote that because he has a very uh, strong connection to that film. And so he thought it would be nice to put that in, but I thought it was such a, a clever and funny way to to talk about men and their feelings and and giving you know men permission to to cry. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you feel like you're just part of the gang. I feel like I'm sitting there drinking wine. In fact, I've read yeah. that viewers are having wine parties while they're watching the show. Yes, I have read that. I've heard that. I've been stopped on the street, and then and, and people have told me so, which just makes me so happy. It makes me so happy. Truly, it really does. So, uh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to hear that. We're all thrilled to hear that. Well, somewhere along the line, there's got to be a specialized wine that's just called Grand Cru, because I mean, it, it's it's such an automatic. Yes. No. You know what's so funny is um, my mom, my sister in law. She said that she works in marketing. She was like, "You guys, this is during the first season." She's like, "You guys definitely, you guys definitely got to figure that out. You got to figure that out." And so, what we did this season for as a wrap gift, the cast, I'm letting you in on a little secret, is that we um, we gifted our our crew with wine bottles. They weren't, they were yeah, so they were wine bottles with like Grand Crew as a the label, and so they they're like little characters caricatures of all the characters' oh, faces. Wow on the bottle uh it's really cool and i think i think it was um it was it was well received but uh i'm looking at it right now actually as i talk to you it's, it's a really really cool image that um that uh, a friend of nicole byers did for us so um yeah anyway shout out to that but but yes i, I would absolutely love for that to happen um hey hopefully you know hopefully someone listening will We'll, we'll, we'll reach out and we can get that we can get that going yeah because I mean that would be such a collector's um, um, addition because to have each one of your, your your photos or your caricatures on there because I did that with Marilyn Merlot's and we have we have such a large oh, collection man. of these these Marilyn Monroe uh, wines but but it always changed every time they release it it was a new Marilyn Mer- Merlot oh nice lovely I love that yeah yeah <laughs> that's cool I think I think at one point we did like an FYC event and um, all the characters had different, I guess different like labels and different captions. Mine was like raking in the Bordeaux for Anthony. Uh, so <laughs> so it's, it, it, it sounds it sounds similar to what was yours, Marilyn Merlot? Merlot, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Well, you're onto something. I'm not too great with the puns, but um, but but I'm sure <laughs> someone someone can figure that out. You know, it shows like this on NBC that that it, it's going to be around for 25, 30 years. Are you prepared mentally and physically for we're going back to a season one in 25 years to watch you grow up again? Oh, gosh. Hey, I would just be so lucky, you know, um, I, I don't think I'm prepared for it. But but if if in fact that happens, then I, I'll be thrilled. And, and Matt, wow. I mean, look, that would be awesome to look back on the journey and go. I was just a pup then and. And now I'm uh, now I'm not so much of a pup, <laughs> um, but, but, but what an incredible ride it's been. Yeah, I mean, hey, that'd be awesome. Well, the quality of the show has that 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 impact of you know that that even though we we're going to see episodes five and six times, it's it, we're going to go back and rewatch them again and again. And that says a lot about the writing as well as the actors, because no matter how old you are in the scene or how old the the, the, the show is, we're still going to watch it. Hey, thank you for saying so. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. What What is the secret sauce? Is it the camaraderie, the collaboration? What What is it that's bringing all this together to where I want to, you know, make this a binge watch? I think that's. I think that's. Uh, I think that's the camaraderie, the collaboration, and the chemistry, right? I, I think um, it starts with with Phil Augusta Jackson and and the writing staff. Um, obviously, without them, we'd have nothing. 
Uh, it trickles down, you know, to all the, the, the other departments down to us. And then, you know, obviously we, we like I said earlier, we, we just really, we enjoy being around each other. We enjoy working with each other. We enjoy collaborating with one another. None of us is looking to outdo the other. We all give space and allow for space for each person to shine and to be their best. And, and we're supportive of that. And I just think that that ultimately is, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the ingredient for success, you know, um, is, is this sort of mutual respect and admiration mm-hmm. and collaboration. And, and then hopefully the audience gets, gets as excited about it as we are, you know? Um, I think that's, 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 what I've, that's what I've come to sort of um, pinpoint, you know, for myself. The fashion on the show is unbelievable because it shows dress up and, and you can still dress down and still look good. I mean, that's the thing about it is they, I love what everybody is wearing. Oh, thank you. Yes. I mean, we, we've had some some amazing costume designers from um, Queen Sylvia to Reiko. Um, and, you know, uh, they both they both, like you said, they've been able to sort of identify uh, each character's particular look. And, and really lean into that and, and, and uh, showcase it. And I, yeah, I, I agree that everyone is very distinctive um, in their fashion. And that's not an easy task for, mm-hmm. for, uh, for a costume designer, but I, I agree. I think they've, they've done a wonderful job. And, and I'm sure as, as the seasons keep going, and that budget keeps growing, uh, the, the, the the fashion will get even better. Yeah, because, I mean, you know how we fans are. We sit there and we identify the clothes you're wearing, and then when you wear something different, we're going we're gonna to be talking about it on social media going, I can't believe Anthony was wearing that today. Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But, hey, you know, at the end of the day, so long as we're in conversation, it's all good. You know, it's, it's all love. Uh, you you coming from the the theater, being out there with that live audience. I mean, because you have to project to hit that that top row up there. What is it like sure. for you to be on on that flat screen where the 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 inflection and stuff has to be more conversational, and and the microphone's going to pick you up no matter what? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I have a funny story, uh, real quick. I I remember. I was doing, I think, Aquarius. Um, um, yeah, I was, I was shooting Aquarius, and uh, I was doing the scene. I was playing the cop, and uh, uh, the company comes in, and, and, and I'm and I'm like, yeah. So the victim, blah blah, blah you know, and and he's like, <laughs> and they're like, cut, cut. And the director comes over, and, and at the time, I'd been doing just a lot of theater, you know, and so I knew better, but I just, it just, I just didn't make that that switch. And so the director comes o- over to me, and he goes, "Hey, Aaron, look, man, we love what you're doing, but you just gotta remember, like, hey, he's right there. Just have a conversation with him. Just talk to him." And I went, "Yeah, yeah, of course, duh," you know. And so it always stuck with me. So now, obviously, whenever I'm doing TV or film, like you said, it's 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 just it's just more distilled, and it's just it's just a it's it's just more conversational and and I really enjoy just being able to just sit there with my friends and just and just talk you know and just go through it um but yeah it, it can be an adjustment uh, and 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 funny enough uh yeah I, I I definitely had to remind myself I have to remind myself of, of that one story on on the set of Aquarius every time I come to set I think of that to make sure that I'm that I'm that I'm dropped in you know uh, yeah no but it's a, it's a lot of fun we- I actually really really enjoy TV and film as well one of the things, I mean, radio people have, have done the same thing going from being on the radio to creating podcasts is that, you know, you don't have to talk like a disc jockey on a podcast. Just be a human being. You're sitting in the car with somebody. Right, right. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. You, you, you know, the camera picks up everything. So yes. um, if you go too, if you go too big, too large, just people in the audience are like, what, what is he doing? What, what's going on? <laughs> you know? Same, same with inflection, the voice. It's like, that doesn't ring true. We see it, you know, so it's. I mean, it's it's kind of comforting because it's like less is more, yeah. you know, less is definitely more in that regard. Who is Anthony in Aaron's heart? And do you feel that that Aaron gets to have a speaking voice while being Anthony? Oh, wow. Uh, well, look, I think I think Anthony, for me, he represents just a part of me that is just very, like, ambitious and wants and, and, and wants to succeed. Um, however, I think I just have a, a better, like, work-life balance. I also really love my family. And I really love my friends, and and I have, you know, certain morals that I just have to abide by. Not that Anthony doesn't, but I'm just saying, you know. So I think that's where we defer. And so, um, yeah, for for me, I, I'm just in, in my heart, Anthony. Anthony represents that, and I and I just I just hope that he 
in some ways, I don't know that, that, that I can speak as myself as him, but I hope that Anthony gets an opportunity to grow closer to, to that side of me that is a little more like just, just free flowing and loving and, and isn't so hell bent on success. So in many ways, I think uh, Anthony, I hope Anthony comes closer to me (laughs) in that, in that sense. Um, You know, and and I think he'll just be so much more, more happy uh, in the end if he does. So, you know, we'll see where where his journey takes him, but, um, but yeah, that's what I want for Anthony. Aaron, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. And the next time we've got to sit here with a glass of wine, because I have a feeling we would go in a completely different direction on some, on some questions. Oh, you're, you're probably right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I would love to do that. And you know what? Next time I'll come back with a Grand Crew bottle of wine. How about that? <laughs> I love it, man. That open. Well, you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you. You as well. This has been a pleasure, Harold. Thank you, sir.